Hey guys, this is Steve with Avid Max. Welcome back to Fly Tying Tuesdays. Uh, today we're going to tie up a fun little bug for you. I'm calling it the Dirty Bug Softy. It just uses the Dirty Bug yarn from Semperfly. This comes in an awesome variety of different colors from really uh, bright and punchy stuff to uh, more naturals, mottled and speckled variations and some high contrast stuff as well. So uh, today we're going with the black. As you can see here on the vise, this pattern um, is all about contrast between red, black, and white with a little bit of pop of color on that uh, tinsel back we've got going on there. So let's get it started. Our hook is a size 10 TMC 113 BLH, a nice barbless hook, great for all of your uh, nymph slash wet fly needs. And then that bead is a three millimeter uh, countersunk tungsten bead from Firehole part of their speckled series of beads. So it's a combination of the black and the screaming red. Um, this particular color is called the midnight red and um, it has kind of some cool UV fluorescing type uh, properties there when you hit it with the torch. So uh, if you haven't seen all the different colors available in this lineup of beads, you're definitely missing out. So check them out, really cool options there. Starting out with some UTC 70 in red. If you don't want to get your scissors, pull tight, leave yourself a long tag, and yank it out. So it saves a little bit of time there. Not too worried about this being pretty or super clean underneath because it's all getting covered up. So we'll come down to about where our barb would be and we'll tie in our first material. That's going to be this really nice uh, dyed red pheasant tail. Um, so Obviously, with it still being a natural fiber, you have a lot of cool variation in the colors from the barring to different shades of red and maroon. So uh, really, really beautiful uh, material to work with here. So um, for the width that we need to cover the back of the fly, you want to go a little bit more plush than your regular, you know, um, you know, Euro flies or sparsely tied stuff. This is going to be a pretty plush bug. So we're going with about seven fibers I found is that sweet spot. Um, you know, you could go a little bit more, but definitely you want to hit at least six or seven. So get those all lined up and straight. Kind of check our length. Little counterclockwise twirl of the thread to keep it flat throughout this process. Uh, a little relaxed one wrap and then pull straight down to lock it. If it's a little bit long, you can kind of cheat it up a little bit while that thread is still kind of loose. And then go a little bit in front and get it to stand perpendicular and out of our way. Come back to the front. And now we're going to tie in both of our, uh, our ribbing and our body material. Like I said, the body, that dirty bug yarn from Semperfly. Ribbing is another Semperfly product. The um, tying wire, this is a 0.2 millimeter in red. Um, there's a lot of great colors and sizes available in that as well. So I'm going to tie both of these in basically the width of the bead behind the bead because I want to save room in that area for my kind of wing case, soft hackle, flashback extravaganza that we're going to have later on. So um, another way to save a little bit of time and a little bit of uh, you know, space from having to tie down, go back, tie in your other material, I'm also going to just tie these in at the same time. So get them lined up and out of my way and we'll just work our way down. Not worried about it being super pretty. Again, this is all getting covered up. Build a little bit of a taper, but I'll also show you a trick of how to use that dirty bug yarn. Um, you know, it being corded and all to your advantage for building up that nice buggy taper on your fly. So half hitch, bob and cradle, gonna come in first and foremost with the bug yarn. So you're gonna pull rather uh, taut at the beginning, get that nice and tight, and as you use your rotary, you're gonna relax your grip moving forward and help it kind of relax and expand and get that conical shape to your fly. So firm grip for starters, relax it. You could always double back if you wanted to, but that's enough taper for me. Come back up with my thread, grab it, lock it front and behind, get it out of our way, and now we'll do that backing material. So here's where you see 
you need a lot of it to get that spine covered up. It, this adds a really nice contrast in color, a really interesting uh, texture with the barbels of that pheasant tail. And because I'm gonna rib it going away from me, that's gonna slide those fibers over. So for starters, I'm gonna cheat in a little bit and tie this on the tire side of the fly. So I'm gonna just pull it ever so slightly towards me so that when I rib it, it kind of straightens itself out. Locking it front behind. Get it out of our hair. Again, half hitch right behind the bead. And bob and cradle. And here's where you'll start to see that material kind of straighten out on the spine of the bug with our nice segmentation. Crawl our way back up with our thread. Lock in front and behind. Pull uh, nice and tight straight down. And helicopter out the wire. Now we're gonna come in with our flash and that's just gonna be some of the UTC Opal uh, Mirage tinsel. This is the large width. And if you cut that on a little bit of a slant, that's gonna help you tie it in. If it's squared off, it's a little bit tricky to get a hold of without moving it around with your thread. So um, just that little bit of an angle gives you something to grab onto to get it um, firmly onto the spine of the fly here. And we're gonna work back to like that second segmentation of wire that we got going on. Once again, does not need to be pretty in this area. So now that we've got our tinsel tied in there, we're gonna come in um, with our CDC prepped in a clip. We gotta split our thread to feed it in there. So if it's not flat, you are gonna wanna do a little gentle uh, counterclockwise twirl of the thread to get it to lay flat. Kind of prop it up with your fingertip, get it to relax. This can be really tricky, but you're just trying to give yourself as big of a target as possible. Go for dead center and then get that loop established. So work a finger in there. If you need to make it longer, you can still kind of wiggle your thread back and forth, kind of feel which way it needs to go to open that loop up. And then if you don't get all the CDC, that's no big deal. And feed it through there, pull your thread tight and release your clip. As you move your bobbin up and down or change the tension, you'll see the thread or the feather wants to kind of rotate around, but just try to get one fixed angle. This is where I find that um, longer bladed scissors help you make um, you know, less cuts as you're moving up, like shorter micro tips, you have to do a bunch of little cuts. Um, you can't get it all in one, but the closer you can to doing that, the easier it is for you. So one big cut there, working your way up that stem. If you chop a bunch out, that's no big deal. We just need the stuff that's trapped in our thread. So get that little piece of stem out of there. Cool. Now use your uh, fingertip as kind of like a bobbin cradle, get a groove going and then make a big spin. If you do this unsupported or you just go kind of hog wild, you are going to lose some CDC. It's a pretty light wispy fiber. Um, so if you just spin it too much too soon, you're going to lose some. Let that just roll down your fingertip until it gets nice and twisted and then crawl back up. You can preen this back as you go, but our dubbing's gonna help us do that anyway. And legs go everywhere. So if you have some that's going forward, that's no big deal. So I'll preen it back just to get my thread cheated up into here. And now we'll get ready for our dubbing. A little bit of wax to help it grab, especially with ice dub, you wanna use some of that. Uh, we're going to use Hairline Ice Dub in the UV Black. It is black, but it's got a little bit of a purple hue and uh, property to it. So get a good healthy pinch of that. You can pack a lot of dubbing underneath um, a flashback like this tinsel we've got here. So don't be afraid to go pretty healthy. Not to mention, you can always yank some out if you're um, finding that you've got too much. So get that established. Preen back that CDC. Start to make a nice pronounced dubbing collar. And this again, flies all about contrast. So we're gonna start to build a really bold red streak right there of our thread collar. So part the CDC, come up top with that flash and capture it. Couple on the back, prop it up. 
couple on the front. Don't be afraid uh, to be bold and create a nice red streak of thread behind that bead. Um, come in with our whip finish. Check it out, make sure you got a nice even red collar all the way around, that's looking pretty good. Get the thread out of there, pull the flash up perpendicular, get that out of there. Um, if you've got any rogue CDC, kind of preen it all in one direction. Anything that's extra, you could come in, pinch out with your fingernails. Um, but if it's a little crazy and wild, that's what it's there for. It wants to look buggy. So the final step, I really like this um, look to a fly, is giving it a little bubble back on that flash with some um, thick solar res. So we're going to coat that flash moving front to back, side to side, just getting good coverage on there. Um, going a little bit heavier than you think because we're going to flip this upside down and let gravity do the work and make a nice little bubble back for us. So work it, try to get that CDC out of the way. You're going to cheat up onto the bead with it a little bit too. And then leaving the most on that little centerpiece, you can kind of spin it around, get it to even out a little bit. Hang it for a second, like I said, let gravity do the work. And we'll hit it with our UV torch. So this bug is super versatile. Um, I myself do quite a bit of Euro nymphing, contact nymphing, check nymphing, tight lining, whatever you'd like to call it yourself. Um, and you can heavily weight it for that technique. You can swing it as a wet fly. You could fish it on a lake in a more calabatus color variation. Um, and I'm sure you'd have success in that regard too. And of course, you could always throw it under an indicator. It's a great anchor fly, great attractor, lead fly, something to turn the fish's heads and maybe you dangle something smaller and more natural off the back. But there you go, the dirty bug softy.